If I could make one superhero movie in my life, it would be IP Man, followed by Superman. Stupid jokes aside, what can I say about the Ip Man series? Wing Chun, Ip Man. With the fourth film on the horizon, it's high time we pay this series some respect. The series has firmly cemented itself as a kung fu classic, with its kick-ass, exhilarating Wing Chun action, which usher in a renaissance of traditional kung fu flicks. But everything that can be said about its action has been said by other video essays on YouTube. Or one of them. So for this episode, I want to take a different approach. I want to talk about the story. Throughout the entire Ip Man series, the master himself is depicted as this morally incorruptible, wise, and nearly invincible character. You know, Superman. How do you write an antagonist for a flawless character? The Ip Man series tackled these questions three different times, with varying degree of success. We'll see what the series did right and wrong, draw some parallels to Superman's past works, and see what we can learn from it. Strap yourself in, this is going to be a weird one. Let's start from the beginning. Ip Man is a 2008 martial art film featuring Donnie Yen, loosely based on the life of the titular real-life Wing Chun master. In the film, Ip Man started out as a flawless character, rich, humble, polite, popular, and confident, and most importantly, capable. Right off the bat, we have a problem. In storytelling, the hero usually starts with a flaw. If the world found out what we truly are, what we possess, we could lose our way of life. He or she goes through hardships, confront and overcome the flaw. All of you are wrong! To turn your backs on the rest of the world! Emerges victorious at the end, usually. But Ip Man, like Superman, starts off flawless. How can he come out the other end as a better man? What can possibly challenge him? The Imperial Japanese Army invaded China. Suddenly, the hero who can solve everything by punching finds himself unable to fight his way through life. His family is struggling, and his friends are unjustly killed by Japanese Army officers. In rage, he man seeks revenge. By challenging and plow through 10 black belts. Only to realize how truly powerless he is at changing the state of war. The film realizes that it man may be flawless. He is not perfect. No one is perfect. By giving him a challenge he can't punch his way through, the film forces Ip Man to self-reflect, and finds meaning in what he does, why he fights, what can he do with his skills. This is what I like to call the Peace on Earth method of writing Superman. In the book Superman Peace on Earth, the Man of Tomorrow also deals with a much larger evil force. World hunger. Superman attempts to end it by sending food to impoverished areas, but militarized local government responses with extreme hostility. Their fight causes the food source to be poisoned, and Superman realizes that this is a systematic problem he cannot solve alone. His mission is not to save people, but to inspire others to do good and change the world. And inspiration is exactly what Ip Man does too. After much contemplation, Ip Man decides to use his skill to protect and inspire. And when the opportunity arises, he challenges a Japanese general to a duel. He wins, inspiring the crowd to take up arms and overwhelms the Japanese army. A man can be all-powerful, a man can be morally perfect, 
but no man is above learning a new lesson. Create an antagonistic force that your hero can use his strength to get through, forces him to change and adapt, and by the end of the story, Ip Man comes out the other side, having a better understanding for the power of martial art. Ip Man was a smashing success, so Ip Man 2 was inevitable. For the sequel, the filmmaker aims to up the ante. I remember during an interview, producer Raymond Wong says, The biggest flaw from the first film is the lack of challenge in fight scenes. All of Ip Man's fights are very one-sided affair, so the suspense is low. It's a sentiment I only half agree, but their solution is blunt and simple. Bring out Doomsday. Ip Man 2 tells the story of Ip Man settling down for a new life in Hong Kong and starting a Wing Chun school, only to meet with hostility from other local grandmasters. Fights after fights, Ip Man's moral code gains the grandmaster's respect. enemies gradually become friends. Later, the Grandmaster is provoked and insulted by an absurdly racist boxer. So this is Chinese boxing? <laughs> you should stick to dancing! <laughs> and in their impromptu East vs West match, the Grandmaster is killed. Now, Ip Man must challenge the boxer to defend the name of Chinese martial art. The Doomsday Method is arguably the easiest way to give Superman a challenge. Just give your invincible hero an equally invincible opponent. And it does work. Say what you will about the DCEU, the Superman fights are visually interesting and are exciting to watch. The same can be said for Ip Man 2. There are a lot more moments of active problem solving that makes the audience go, ooh and engages the viewer into the fighting process. However, problem arises when it's the only challenge Ip Man faces. Neither the infights nor the racism pose a real challenge for Ip Man on a fundamental level. Consequently, he doesn't go through an arc. It's the same mistake recent Superman films made. The films are too preoccupied with attacking his physicality and questions his morality. But fighting is what Superman is good at. And morality is what defines Superman. I'm here to fight for truth and justice in the American way. You wouldn't see Superman emerges the other side of the story physically stronger or morally superior. I think this is why, despite fights in Ip Man 2 are more visually interesting, they don't seem as iconic to me. Ip Man may be plowing through 10 black belts with no suspense in the first film. Narratively, that was the moment Ip Man changes. He realizes how useless he is. He wins the battle but lost the war, and it serves as a powerful release of emotion. Each fight tests Ip Man's commitment, his wisdom, his determination, instead of just a roadblock to get over. So, while the Doomsday Method may make fight scenes more interesting, it cannot be the only challenge a flawless hero faces. While making your fight scenes suspenseful, don't forget to make it emotional. And finally, we come to Ip Man 3. After the events of the first two films, Ip Man is now a full-fledged hero. Everybody knows him, and people either want his help or want to dethrone him. But when Ip Man is too busy fighting for the people, the true antagonist of the film creeps up on him. His wife's cancer. Instead of someone he can fight directly or indirectly, this time there is no fighting that can help. For every fight Ip Man partakes, only takes away precious time he could have spent with his wife. The fight scenes continues to improve, with even better use of the environments and much more suspense and challenge. Often, 
fights aren't just skirmishes. Each fight has a different goal. It's fun to watch, but narratively, these fights aren't critical to the story. The story of Ip Man dealing with his wife's cancer. In other words, the film focuses much more on Ip Man as a character than Wing Chun as a martial art. This is what I refer to the All-Star Method. In All-Star Superman, the Man of Steel himself is dying. I'm dying. And for his remaining times, Superman spends it with Lois, while juggling his work on protecting Earth. By giving a hero a Kobayashi Maru, what a hero can do becomes irrelevant. He can't do anything. What he chooses to do, in turn, gives great insight into his characters. Ip Man chooses to learn his lesson and knows his limit. He skipped on an important title defense duel so he can have a dance with his wife. Ip Man comes out of this trauma changed. Not necessarily objectively superior, but gaining a new perspective nonetheless. So, that's three lessons about writing Superman that I've learned from rewatching the series. Some may consider Ip Man as nothing more than popcorn action flicks, which is a totally fair assessment. But it doesn't mean it's devoid of value. Looking deeper, you can always find something to learn from. While this is a bit of a strange exercise on the surface, it's likely what the writers had to do to keep improving each film. After all, a man can be morally perfect, but no man is above learning a new lesson. It's for this reason I'm very excited for Iman 4, even if most people think it should have ended long ago. But what do you think? Do you like the Iman series? If you can write Superman, how would you write him? Let's talk more.